In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this snowman mason jar cozy. And it's actually two parts. It's um, the bottom part. It's actually two parts. The bottom part is the peekaboo window cozy. Okay, so this is the bottom cozy with the peekaboo window. So that's, I filled it with some candies. You can fill it with homemade goodies or whatever you want to do. So that's going to be the first video. And then I'm going to have a second video where I'm going to show you how to do the snowman mason jar topper. And then um, all you need to do is just put that right on top of your mason jar. And screw that on. Okay, so it's going to be done in two videos. The first video, I'm going to show you how to make the mason jar cozy with the peekaboo window. And then in the second video, I am going to show you how to make the snowman mason jar topper with a little top hat. How cute is that? He's going to have this little scarf and a carrot nose. So if you would like to learn how to make the peekaboo mason jar cozy, go ahead and join me in this tutorial and I'll show you how to do it. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to make the mason jar cozy with the little peekaboo window so you can see the little homemade goodies and treats inside. I'm going to be using a 12 ounce mason jar and this is the regular mouth. It's not the wide mouth because they do come in, you know, different sizes. So this one will be for the regular mouth. I'm going to be using a four ply worsted weight acrylic yarn. The color that I'm using is white. I'm going to be using a size H or eight five millimeter crochet hook. Okay, so to begin, we're going to start off with a magic ring. Okay, into the center of the magic ring, we are going to do six single crochets. That's one. Okay, that's six single crochets, so I'm going to go ahead and pull on the tail to close up that center circle of the magic ring. And then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet that we did when we began the round. And then I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to do two single crochets into that first stitch. And we're going to be working in the round, so I don't want to lose track of where I started, so I'm going to put a stitch marker into that first stitch that I did. Okay, so that stitch had two single crochets. The next one will also have two single crochets into the same stitch. And then two single crochets into the next one. We're going to do two single crochets in every single stitch for this round two. And when you're done with round two, you will have 12 single crochets. Okay, so that's round two. It's 12 single crochets, so I'm going to go ahead and take my stitch marker out. And rather than doing a slip stitch into that first stitch, because I could do that and do a slip stitch and then pull it through and then chain one and then do the stitch, but then what would happen is you're going to have this line that's going to show and it's going to be visible in your work. And we don't want that, so I'm going to unravel that because that's not what we're going to do in this case. We're going to do something different, but I just wanted to kind of go over that. You can do that, but then you will have a line, a visible line, showing where you did those slip stitches each time. It will kind of show in your work. So this will look nicer. So I'm just going to go ahead and, so rather than do the slip stitch, and then chain one, and then work the single crochet, we're going to start right away by doing a single crochet right into that stitch. So this is going to be the beginning of round two. Do a single crochet right into that first stitch right there where the stitch marker was. Now I'm going to put the stitch marker back in and that's going to be the beginning of round three. So for the next stitch I am going to do two single crochets into that same stitch. The next stitch will have one single crochet. Next stitch do two single crochets. Next stitch will have one single crochet. And then the next stitch, you'll do two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, and the next stitch, you'll do one single crochet. And then you probably guessed the next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. One single crochet into the next. Then two into the same stitch. And then one single crochet into the next one. There's one more stitch here before the stitch marker, so we're going to do two single crochets 
into that stitch. And that is the end of round three. Where the stitch marker is, that's where we're going to begin our round four. When you're done with this round, you'll have 18 single crochets. So now, this is the beginning. Where the stitch marker is, that's going to be the beginning of round four. So I'm going to go ahead and take out my stitch marker. And we're going to go ahead and do a single crochet right into that stitch where the stitch marker is. Do a single crochet. And that is the beginning of round four. I'm going to go ahead and put my stitch marker back in. All right. The next stitch, so we just did one single crochet into that stitch. The next stitch will have just one single crochet. Next stitch you'll do two single crochets into the same stitch. Next two stitches, one single crochet each. Next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. And then the next two stitches, just one single crochet each. And then the next stitch, two single crochets into the same stitch. And one single crochet into the next two stitches. That was one. Next stitch will have one. And then two into the next. So you can probably see the pattern. We did we started off with one single crochet in the first stitch and then the next stitch, then two, then one single crochet in the next two stitches, then two stitches in the next, and we do that all the way around. Okay, so the next stitch will have one, and the next stitch will also have one. One after that, two stitches into the same. Next two stitches, just one single crochet each. And this one stitch right before the stitch marker, which is the last stitch of this round, will have two single crochets. All right. So where the stitch marker is, that's going to be the beginning of our round five. So we've just completed round four. We should have 24 single crochets when you're done with this round. I'm going to take my stitch marker out because I'm ready to begin round five. And I'm going to do a single crochet right into that stitch. And I'm going to put the stitch marker back in to that first stitch because I do not want to forget where I began. Okay, so I did one single crochet into that first stitch. The next two stitches will have one single crochet each. So the first three stitches of round five have one single crochet each. The next stitch after that is going to have two single crochets into the same stitch. And then the next three stitches will have one single crochet each. The next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. Three stitches will have one single crochet each. The next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. Next three stitches, one single crochet each. And then the next stitch will have two single crochets into the same. The next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. The next three stitches will have one single crochet each. Okay, the next stitch will have two single crochets into the same stitch. The next three stitches will have one single crochet each. And then this last stitch of the round, just before the stitch marker, we'll have two single crochets into the same stitch. Okay, so that completes round five. If we take our mason jar now and we place this on top, you can see that that is just the perfect size for the bottom part of the mason jar. So now, um, for the first five rounds, we were increasing because we wanted it to get larger and larger, this circle. So now we're not going to be doing any more increases at this point because we're going to start working on making the sides of the mason jar. So when we're done with this round five, you should have 30 single crochets. Okay, so for round six, we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to take the stitch marker out. Okay, we're going to do one single crochet for the first stitch of round six. Okay, so that is the beginning of round six. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do one single crochet in every single stitch until we get back to the stitch marker. So 
since we're not doing any more increases and we're just doing one single crochet in each, we should have 30 single crochets when we're done with round six. Okay, so we're going to just work one single crochet in every single stitch all the way around until we get back to the stitch marker. So I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause, and when I have finished this round and I'm back to the stitch marker, I will meet you back here. So I just finished round six, so I'm ready to begin round seven, so I need to take my stitch marker out. And I'll do my first single crochet for round seven, right in that stitch where the stitch marker was. Okay, so I'm beginning round seven. So for round seven, it is the same as round six. You just work one single crochet in every stitch. Same thing for round eight and for round nine. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on pause while I work three more rounds of single crochet. So when I have three more rounds completed, I will meet you back here. While I had the camera on pause, I did three more rounds of one single crochet in each stitch. Okay, so you can see that your work is curling up right now, and that's perfectly normal. That's what we want because this is where this curls up to start making the sides for the mason jar. So let's just go ahead and show you that so far. It'll fit right over the bottom of the mason jar. And you can see that it's just about right there where that little round circle is. Now some, you may have a different design on your mason jar. This is a ball mason jar and it will say mason under here. So if, it should be right underneath the word mason right there. Um, this one has like the little decorative window or this one happens to have that little decorative oval. I don't know if you can see that very well. It has like um, some fruits on there. So it's going to be basically, if you stretch it over, it's going to be right underneath that. Um, or right underneath the word mason. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we're at the point. So now we're going to begin round 10. Okay, so this this was um, where we would begin round 10, but we're not going to actually be working into that stitch. I'm going to put the stitch marker right here where we ended round 9, okay? Because we're going to be skipping the first three stitches for round 10. So go ahead and put the stitch marker into this place, that stitch, where we ended round 9. Because see, it was here right after it, okay? This is the last stitch of round nine, but we're not going to work into that stitch where the stitch marker is like we did in the previous rounds. So we're taking that out, and what we're going to do is I'm going to put the stitch marker into that last stitch. I'm going to go ahead and put the stitch marker into that last stitch for round nine. And then what we're going to do is we are going to skip three stitches. So count over three stitches, one, two, three, skip the three stitches, and then put a stitch marker right there in that fourth stitch. So I'm going to count over one, two, three. Putting a stitch marker into that stitch right after that third one. So that's four stitches over from the red one basically. It's where you place your stitch marker. So in between the two stitch markers you should have three stitches. Okay, one, two, three. Perfect. Alright, so now to begin round ten. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to chain one. Then go ahead and take that stitch marker out. Okay, we just chain one. We're going to turn our work and we're going to do a single crochet right into that stitch where the stitch marker was. See, so what we did is we turned our work because we're not going to work into these three stitches that we skipped. I'm going to put my stitch marker back into that first stitch that we did. Okay, this is round 10. And then you're going to do one single crochet in every single stitch until you get to your yellow stitch marker. Okay, so I'm right there. That's the stitch right before the stitch marker. I'm going to take my yellow stitch marker out and I'm going to work one single crochet into the stitch where this yellow stitch marker is. So I'm working one single crochet and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work and do a single crochet into that first stitch and replace my stitch marker. Now we're beginning round 11. 
So you can see what I did. We're turning our work because we're not working those three stitches in between the stitch markers. Okay, so we're going to do one single crochet in every single stitch until we get back to the red stitch marker. So I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause while I work one single crochet in every single stitch until I get to this stitch marker here. Okay, I'm finishing up round 11 and then here's the stitch where the stitch marker is. I'm going to go ahead and take that stitch marker out and I'm going to do a single crochet into the stitch where the stitch marker was. Okay, then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and do a single crochet into that first stitch replacing my stitch marker. And this is the beginning of round 12. So round 12 is the same as round 11. One single crochet in every single stitch until you get back to the yellow stitch marker and you will leave those three stitches unworked. So I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause while I do one single crochet until I get back to the stitch marker. I have the camera on pause. I was just working one single crochet in each stitch until I get to the stitch marker. I am here where my yellow stitch marker is and I'm going to do a single crochet into that same stitch where the stitch marker was and that finishes round 12. So I'm going to begin round 13 now. So I'm going to chain one, churn my work, single crochet into that first stitch. I'm going to put the stitch marker back in and then I'm going to do one single crochet in each stitch until I get back to my stitch marker. So we're going to do four more rounds just like we did the last round. So just repeat. Um, four more rounds the same way just working one single crochet until you get to the stitch marker and of course do the single crochet in the same stitch as the stitch marker then you'll chain one turn your work and just keep working back and forth between stitch markers leaving these unworked so I am going to do this is round 13 so we're going to do 13 14 15 and 16 so four more rounds 13 through 16 I will go ahead and put my camera on pause while I do that. So when I have four more rounds done, I will meet you back here. So while I had the camera on pause, I continue to work round 13 through 16. So four rounds of just single crochets. And I'm just finishing up round 16 because I just wanted to show you the last two stitches. Okay, so I'm going to do a single crochet in the stitch before the stitch marker. And then I'm going to remove the stitch marker and finish my round 16 with a single crochet into that same stitch where the stitch marker was and that ends round 16 so now you can see we can see we did the last few rounds skipping those three stitches in between so that is the opening of our little peekaboo window for our mason jar so let me show you that so far how that's looking okay so stretch that right over your mason jar and if you happen to have the decorative window you can see how that is right there so now we're going to start closing up the little window now so so for round 17 that's we just finished round 16 I'm going to take the stitch marker out I don't need that in there now okay so I'm going to chain one okay and then I'm going to do a single crochet into that stitch where the stitch marker was. And then I'm just going to do one, for round 17, I'm just going to do one single crochet in each stitch until I get to that stitch marker. This is round 17. So we'll just work until we get to the red stitch marker and then I'll show you what we'll do different once we get there. So just keep going until you get to the stitch marker. Okay, so here's the stitch marker. I want to go ahead and take that stitch marker out because I want to work that stitch where that was. And that ends round 17 here. So now we're ready to begin round 18. So what we're going to do is we have this opening for where the window is. We're going to start closing up the window now. So we need to chain three. One, two, three. Okay. So round 18 starts off with three chains 
and then do a slip stitch into that stitch where the stitch marker was. So for round 19, chain one and do a single crochet into that first stitch. I'll go ahead and put the stitch marker in. And then I'm just going to do one single crochet all the way across. So I'm going to do one single crochet in every single stitch. And I'm going to put the red stitch marker in here. This is the stitch just before we did the chain three. So go ahead and do one single crochet in every single stitch until you get to your red stitch marker. Or to I'm going to take the stitch marker out because I also want to do a single crochet into that stitch. And now we're at the point where we have those three chains. So we're going to do one single crochet in each of those three chains. One, two, three. Okay, so I just did one single crochet in those three chains. I'm going to take my stitch marker out here. Okay, I'm going to do a single crochet where the stitch marker was. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in. Okay, this is round 20. We're starting now. Okay, so for round 20 you'll just do one single crochet in every single stitch. Okay, we're gonna work one single crochet in each of those stitches as well where the chain stitches were. Okay, so we're back to where the stitch marker is take my stitch marker out, do a single crochet into that stitch. That's the beginning of round 21. And that's the beginning of round 21. Put my stitch marker back in so I know where I began this round. And then you just do one single crochet in every single stitch for this round as well. Okay, so here's the stitch just before the stitch marker. So that ends round 21. So now, I'm going to take the stitch marker out so I can begin round 22. So where the stitch marker was, I'm going to do a single crochet. Put the stitch marker back in. So I know where I begin round 22. Alright, so for this one, we're going to do one single crochet in every single stitch. Until we get back to the stitch marker, just like the previous round. Okay, so just finishing round 22. Well, let me show you how that looks so far. I'm going to turn my mason jar upside down. I'm going to pull up a loop so it doesn't unravel on me before I take the crochet hook out. I'm going to fit that over my mason jar, show you what it looks like so far. Okay, so you can see you have your little peekaboo window. We do need a couple, a few more rounds now because we want to have our rounds end right underneath where the cap would go. So you can see we will need three more rounds. So for round 23, 24, and 25, it's the same thing. One single crochet in every single stitch. So I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause while I do three more rounds of single crochet. So when I have that done, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so while I had the camera on pause, I did three more rounds of single crochet. So for me, this is round 25. Now you may find that, depending on your tension, maybe you didn't need three more rounds. You may have only need two more rounds. So that's fine, because basically you just want to make sure... Here's the mason jar. I'm going to turn it upside down and show you. I'm going to go ahead and show you how that fits over the mason jar now. And you want to stretch it there. So. For me, round 25 ended right underneath that lip where the lid would go. So if you found that you didn't need three more rounds, that's fine because your tension might be different than mine. So now you see that's where the lid's going to go. So I have this white plastic um, lid that I can use. You can also use a, med a metal lid, of course. Now to give a nice finished edge, what I'm going to do. So to finish... Um, this off, I'm just going to do one, I'm going to do one slip stitch in every single stitch around. So let me go ahead and take my stitch marker out. I'm going to do a slip stitch into that stitch there. 
I'm going to put my stitch marker back in because I want to remember where I started. Okay, and I'm going to just do one slip stitch in every single stitch for this round until I get back to my stitch marker. And you want to make sure that you do not do these slip stitches too tight because you don't want it to be too tight where it won't fit over your mason jar again. So I think just by doing the slip stitches, it just gives it a nice little finished edge. That's how it will look if you put the slip stitches in. You, you don't have to do the slip stitches if you don't want. It will look like this if you do not do them. So there's just a slight difference, but I do think it looks nicer with the slip stitches. Okay, so I just finished doing my slip stitches. Here's my stitch marker. I'll go ahead and take that out. And then I'll just go ahead and cut my yarn now. I'm ready to fasten off. Okay. Then I'll just go ahead and insert my hook into that next stitch and just pull it through. Give it a tug to close up. Or give it a tug to fasten off. And then I just need to weave these two tails in. So let me go ahead and pull that tail through here. That was the bottom where the magic ring was. Okay, so before I weave those in, I'm just going to show you for the center circle. Let me go ahead and just fit that back over for you, show you what that looks like so far. And after doing the slip stitches, if it still fits, so that's good. That means I didn't do my slip stitches too tightly, so that's perfect. So there you have your little peekaboo window. How cute is that? That way, when you give away your homemade goodies or little treats, you have a little peekaboo window where they can kind of sneak a peek of what's inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do slip stitches all around that center circle there where the window is to give it a nice finished look here. So I'm going to go ahead and do a slip knot. Okay, and then I'm just going to find, I'll start in the corner here, insert my yarn into that stitch. And then pull it through. Okay, and then I'm just going to do one little slip stitch in each stitch around. Okay, I'm almost back to where I started. I'm just working little slip stitches all the way around. I think it'll look a little nicer if we do that. I mean, you don't have to do this part, but I think it looks nicer. Last one. Okay, so now I just did slip stitches all the way around that opening. So see how I think it just makes a nicer edge around there. It doesn't look so unfinished that way. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn there. I'll just go ahead and pull that tail through. And give it a tug fasten off and then all that's left to do now is to weave in these tails so I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause while I weave the tails in and then I'll show you how it looks when I put it back over my mason jar okay so while I had the camera on pause I wove in all my loose tails and now I'll go ahead and show you that how that fits over my mason jar now so let's go ahead and fit the cozy right over and how cute is that little uh, mason jar cozy with a little peekaboo window that way when you give away your gifts of homemade goodies and treats um, they can get a little sneak peek of what's inside how cute is that so I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial of how to make the mason jar cozy with a little peekaboo window next tutorial I'm going to show you um, a little snowman topper which will be just adorable so that way when you give away your Christmas gifts You'll have a little snowman topper with a little, I'm going to make one with a little top hat. And I want to thank you for watching today and have a great day.